light turns on in a dark room. It flickers at first, and then it grows in confidence. The flicker turns into a warm beating pulse, a heartbeat. Chiwoniso, a name of Shona origin meaning light. Meaning that when my parents had me, at birth, they had a light bulb moment, an idea, a spark. Today, I embark on that journey of enlightenment with you. Ladies and gentlemen, lyricists and lovers, stoics and change makers, poets, musicians, and muses of life, welcome aboard Celeste Airlines the first of its kind, a 1998 model, 32-seater, navigating the blue-rippled African skies for over a quarter of a century. Please, take your seat and make yourself comfortable. Possibilities are limitless at the heart of a sun that shines so brilliantly this side of the equator. We can only equate excellence to taking a chance to kissing the edge of a sky, scraping our adolescent knees each time we fall in this playground called life. We can only take a chance. On behalf of creatives changing the world, I ask that you please take a minute to switch your biases to flight mode. Make sure to check that you've put all your misconceptions in the overhead bins so as not to hurt your fellow passengers' sentiments. For travelers who may be moving with children who have an interest or an ambition in the arts economy, I ask that you please offer them support. You will find that on this flight, we have a new custom feature. Our seatbelts have been designed with this very special material just for your children, and it's called encouragement. Now, as you take your seat, and recline, I hope that you enjoy this flight. Please take note that these are some of the beverages we do not serve. We do not serve fear. We do not serve intimidation. We do not serve a lack of self-belief. But what we do serve is courage. We serve empathy. We serve compassion. And that is the beauty of artistry. As a spoken word artist, my profession has seen me traveling to different places. From the daydreams of a little girl sitting in a classroom in Bulawayo, looking out the window, to the ambitions of a young woman sitting on a plane on her way to Accra, to Nairobi, to Johannesburg, through the avenue of spoken word, Bienvenue, welcome. Akwaba, welcome. Makati, Salibonani, Medase, Asante. Some of the words and greetings I've had to learn in different spaces in order to engage and be compassionate with my audience from different backgrounds. And I remember walking through an airport once and the immigration officer, as I filled out the form and he looked at it, where I had written profession, he saw poet. And he said, poet, is that a side thing that you do? And I said, no, I am a poet. I have professed my love for language, and in turn, language has professed its love for me. Therefore, it is my profession, artistry. I'm a poet. The simple definition of the word occupation is to take up space. So what gift do you have that allows you to take up space? At the intersection of creativity, there's so many factors that come into being, much like weaving a basket, the bread basket of Africa. And so as you follow these breadcrumbs through storytelling that I show you, I hope that you are encouraged. I'd also like to inform all parents on board that we have made sure to sky check any emotional baggage to ensure the sanity and the security of any parent who may be having heart palpitations when their child comes to them and says, I would like to be a storyteller. Do not worry. Your years of investment in school fees will not go to waste because the world is moving at a fast pace 
And if anything, what you can do for your young people is encourage them in the spaces in which they are most gifted. Education, it takes place in every area of our life. In the classroom that is your life, you have to participate and be present. And so the classroom that is your life is not going to look the same as the next person's classroom. Some people learn from home. Some people learn from observing. Some people learn from reading, from listening to music. Look at how art has impacted and changed your life. From how you choose your favorite nail polish color, to the soundtrack you put in the car when you drive your kids to school, to the lady who offers you an extra green pepper as she arranges tomatoes for you from the side of the road, that is artistry. That is color coming to life. Again, another favorite memory of mine as I was leaving home to go to Nairobi, walking through Joshua Nkomo Airport and seeing this beautiful shield right on the infrastructure. And I thought to myself, I wonder, for anyone else passing through this airport, how would they interpret this shield? Doesn't it make you curious when you're in a new place and you see art woven into different aspects of life and you ask yourself, where does this come from? That is art intersecting with architecture. That is art intersecting with engineering. So creative thinkers are people who build bridges through language. And so therefore, when we have practical thinkers and imaginative thinkers in the same space, we're able to radicalize and change. After all, imagination is the simple craft of making the image of a nation. A planet is only as beautiful as we allow ourselves to plan it. We have to be open to the possibilities that lie on the opposite side of our fears. Ladies and gentlemen, you might be experiencing a bit of turbulence on this flight, but that is normal. In this life, as human beings, we've been taught in biology that we have two responses, fight or flight mode. When we are scared, when we are nervous, when we are put in a situation that requires our optimum strength. And I'm not much of a fighter. I'm a lover, hence the profession, poetry. But what I do suggest is in the area of flight mode. Do take flight, but not in the opposite direction of your fears. Take flight in the direction of your dreams. Take flight in the thing that sets your heart on fire. Take flight in the thing that ignites you. The skies were meant to be navigated. And when you think about it, it's upside down. We're walking right side up, looking at a sky that sometimes thinks, what would it be like for people to walk on me? I wonder if the sky ever envies the fact that the ground has our feet, that we can plant ourselves here. And that is why we listen to the years the ears in the years, the ears in earth, because time requires our audience. And this is how you transform lists into listening. When you start to add compassion to your grocery, when you start to add compassion to your trolley, that's how you transform and you change. When the magnets on your fridge are not only reminders of timetables you must follow, but are also indicators of the ways in which you are magnetizing every room that you walk in, and all the people that you attract, and all the souls that you change. The soul in you, the souls of your feet, because you are grounded, the souls of knowing that the beauty of being a human being is that we have the advantage that just as much as birds take flight, once in a while we are also allowed to just stand our ground, and it's just as powerful, it's just as impactful. Because in this journey that we call life, in our artistry, it is important to remember that recycling did not just start with, with conversations to do with climate change. Recycling has been something we've been doing the entirety of our existence. We have recycled traditions, customs, names, languages. That is the artistry. In our culture, whenever I'd come home to greet my grandmother after school, I'd wombera mawoko. That is poetry. It's greeting, but it's a drum. It's saying, how was your day? It's saying, masquera say, which is to say, how did you spend your day? And I have spent it well as long as you have spent it well. 
And when I think of language and the beauty in certain words, I think to myself, how can people not see the musicality in their voices, in their accents, in the way that they interact, in the way that we shake hands, in the way that we express ourselves and dance, that is poetry. So now that we have gone through the rain, we've gone through turbulent skies, we've been flying through an economy, my objective is to one day see creatives all over the world go from a place of being emerging, upcoming, to established and progressing, to excelling, to being in spaces where their art is sustainable and they're able to actually make a living off of these ideas that we consume for entertainment. Because surprisingly, even with all the word platters that we are serving on this plane, creatives do not eat adjectives for breakfast. <laughs> It is important to recognize that creatives, just like in any other profession, need to know the importance of financial literacy, need to know the importance of intellectual property, need to be able to negotiate for themselves what is a fair wage, what they will allow themselves to do in certain spaces and for whichever audience. These are things I've had to learn, practical examples. I've had moments that were difficult. I've had moments that were empowering for me to actually realize that someone can only take what you do seriously as long as you take it seriously and how you present it to everyone else. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be bringing a platters to you on this flight. The first platter I'd like to serve is a poem called Swag. Swag, she was a goddess. Independence is a state of mind and not a state of being. It is the inability to lose yourself or hurt yourself or break yourself because truth be told, you cannot live without yourself. Swag, she was a goddess. And the only reason I use the past tense is because when she passed us, it was that tense to the point where we began to doubt the permanence of our own existence. You are beautiful inside and out, although you've been torn inside and out. And if no one can understand that, then please stay out, swag. She was a goddess. Welcome to the Republic of Chioniso, where the capital city is confidence and the national anthem is tolerance. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you have been so trusting on this flight. I've never met passengers who've never asked where they were going, but you embarked on this plane anyways. So let me share with you the itinerary. We are departing from a place of blissful ignorance, and we hope to arrive to our final destination of enlightenment. We hope to interweave those skills and to ensure that there is change in spaces that need us. We also hope that we are able to have conversations in corporate spaces to do with climate change as well. I, I encourage you to just notice different infrastructures and rooms and restaurants that you've been to when people recycle material to make cute little seats and we're like, oh, this is so creative, but it's also helping the climate. If a car has gone into disrepute and is no longer used or functional, and people take those tires and form seats and make chairs, that becomes part of the interior design of different restaurants. If you look at people who recycle bottle tops and make earrings out of them, or using old plastics to make bags, that is art. But essentially, art is meant to preserve, it is meant to save, it is also meant to make us conscious. Because when you admire someone's attire or you admire their jewelry, you'll say, that's beautiful. Where did you get it? How was it made? And that facilitates a conversation for awareness. Because then the person can say, well, I make these from recycled material. And you start to wonder, where does this recycled material go? So these are ways in which we can infiltrate and actually implement art into our spaces at home, in any place we go to, this is how we can implement art into our spaces. We go back again to biology. Ironically, in school, sciences were not my favorite subject, but they always make appearance in my poetry. 
DNA. DNA does not stand for deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA stands for do not apologize, and I don't apologize because it is in my DNA to be unapologetic. That is the power of genetics. And here, we chisel out of tooth and truth a dentistry of rhythm and blues. This is a case of stairs leading to different points of view. In this double story called consciousness is a house built on solid ground. We are building up, we are rising forward, we are descending, we are crashing, but still we are flying and that is enterprising creativity. Where I come from, my grandmother would give us extra bus fare just from selling airtime, that was enterprising creativity. She would pack cute little cakes and plastics and sell them to kids. That is enterprising creativity. We come back to ourselves because to create is to recognize that there is a problem. So essentially to create is to make a way, to find a path, to navigate the skies of your mind. Look at the itinerary of your flight. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being gracious to the passenger next to you. Thank you for ensuring that your biases were put on flight mode. Thank you for ensuring that you lifted your misconceptions and you put them in the overhead bin. It has been an absolute pleasure being a hostess for you on this flight. We are now arriving at our final destination, which is enlightenment and joy at the right time and in alignment with all your dreams and blessings. I pray that when you reach the runway that is your life, that you make sure as you get your boarding pass, that the, the connectivity that we need the most does not need to be wireless. It is the connectivity of humanity. It is the connectivity of interactions. Cruising at an altitude of gratitude, I am your air hostess once again, Chiwaniso. It has been a pleasure hosting you on this flight.